Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Random. Berto Will is your host. Thank you so kind of for being a part of the show. We are going to have, as usual, a great show for you today. How's everybody doing? I trust all are fine. I trust everybody is doing fine. I see that our our chat is great, big, and active already. So anyhow, let's go ahead. Eric Hayes is in the house from Atascacita Kingwood, E2247 from all over is in the house. We also have Bridge MCP from Binghamton, New York in the house. Paul Fleming from uh from, from uh Springs, Georgia. From see, I, I either forget the first part or the second part. Anyway, from Georgia, Lee Grant from Montgomery County. We also have uh, part of it, part of it, part of it in the house. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. Bridge MCP from Binghamton said, it's so hot. It's so hot. Girl, how hot is it? Yvette Avery Herod from Atlanta, Georgia. From Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome aboard, my dear, beautiful lady. Powder. Powder spring. I got it. God, you have a better memory than I do. Anyway, folks, anyway, hoax, what we have is a good thing. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, starting out, Eric Hayes says, now the people doing the canceling is worried about Orange Men. The View co-host Joy Bear word Tuesday that Donald Trump might take their ABC talk show along with MSNBC host Rachel Maddow's show off the air if, it, if he becomes president again. You said recently that you thought you, as an outspoken critic, could be a target yourself. Some people think that sounds overdramatic, but I'm right there with you. I think that is so vindictive that he will go after however he has to through the IRS, maybe, or even through sponsors to get us off the air, maybe, or you. Seriously, should we be talking about that? Uh, taking that, Barrett said, Maddo told Bar Barrett that she was no more worried about what Trump might do to her than she was about what he could do to everyone else in the United States, which is a true statement. A true statement a true statement. Okay. Uh, Michael Rodney says it's a humid day. Need for a second shower. Took longer than I thought. Hey, what can I say? All right, Melanie Keelan says, Bridge was incredible on yesterday's show. And I actually made a, 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 I cut the video of Bridge already. And I'll be inserting it into a blog post that we're going to put out there uh, with the right, not the right narrative, etc. Bridge was great. Bridge made me do some research as to whether, as to how, to corroborate what she said, you know, I, you know, I take, I know Bridge is informed, but again, I always want to get a second source in on the the uh, genocide that the British imposed on Ireland. So I did, and I found reputable documentation that, in effect, while we all call it the potato famine, we should also have called it the genocide. So I, uh, Bridge, as usual. You brought some knowledge to the program. All right. We also have uh, Paravet Paravet. Paul Fleming says Marjorie Taylor Ground is in a runoff today, and I'm going to vote to get her out of office. Salud, my brother. I didn't know she was in a runoff. I thought she won the damn thing outright. That is shocking. All right. I wasn't following her race at all. Uh, anyhow, let's see what else we got here. Lee Grant is in the house from Montgomery County. Uh, Paul Fleming also says, Matto on Trump victory, the whole government has to work entirely for the leader. There's no government providing information and services, not at all. Due to Israeli genocide, Gregory Meeks, New York Five Financial Service and Foreign Affairs, and Ben Garden, uh, Maryland Chair and Senate uh, Foreign Relations Committee, stopped it. Biden beat them down. Ay, 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 ay. Biden, uh, Biden is... Well, I'm not going to go there today. Uh, Eric Hayes says, smart. Apple is discontinuing its buy now, pay later service now as Apple pay later barely a year after its initial launch in the U.S. and will rely on companies who already dominate the industry like Affirm and and Karma. You know, yeah, I mean, that, that's your choice to do that, right? Um, not duplicating services, I guess. It's probably cheaper than to create a whole infrastructure. That just speaks well for single payer healthcare. The same thing applies, right? But we don't expect people to understand that. Actually, we do. All right, let's see what else we got here. 
Boeing JBU-31 JDAM Joint Direct Attack Munition Kits onto 2,000-pound Mark, uh, um, Mark 84 bomb, creating 50 feet by 36 feet, 11 meters deep. Uh, cratering penetrates up to 15 inches uh, metal or 11 feet of cement. Hmm. And that's what they're using, aren't they? Boeing Merge McDonnell Douglas F-15 is a dual-role air-to-air and air-to-ground tactical fighter. Mark 84 bomb causes lethal fragmentation to a radius of 400 yards, just 40 yards shy of a quarter mile. Wow. Now that's an explosion, right? And that's what they call not lethal or not not lethal. That somehow that they're, they're humane. I'm sorry. That doesn't compute. Uh, Egberto, is the Mato interview up yet? No, it's not up yet. Uh, the the Progressive Forum here in Houston, they're not putting that out until the 27th. And when that comes out, I'll have some outtakes on that. It was a great interview that she gave. But it's E2247 times. Day 256 since 7th of October 23. At least 37,372 Palestinians killed. 571 persons more than day 245. At least 85,452 wounded. 1,072 persons per than day 245. Uh, Do not fly Boeing. It's a weapon. GBU 39 small diameter bomb was used in Rafa tent camp Sunday night, 26th of May. Do not fly any airline using Boeing. Well, that's going to be hard to do, uh, E2247. Hell, I am heading to Baltimore, where, by the way, I'm going to need folks to start supporting that particular trip. But I'm going to be going to Baltimore for uh, Netroots Nation 2024. How am I to get there? Uh, I don't have the time to drive or the ability to do so. What we have to come up with is is pragmatic, pragmatic answers to people to be able to do something that they feel they're making a difference because they are. Not flying a Boeing plane is probably not pragmatic based on what we have. So maybe what we need to do is make do something to bring down Boeing stock, maybe. Uh, but again, that is. Those are different options that we have to be looking at, my dear brother, E2247. Bridge MCP says, Michael was 104 here today, 75% humidity and dew point. That is hotter than Texas. Wow. Tom C says, watching from the shadows where it's cooler. I'm glad to hear you are. And Paul Fleming Sr. says, if Trump had his way, taxes on middle-income households would rise by 5100 to 8300 a year, according to the Center of American Progress. Hey. I I have whoa where is ah that shouldn't occur like that let me see if I can fix that problem uh I have a minor problem here so I need to do this I need to do that I also need to go here and go add some uh the two other programs the two other videos that I have I got some great videos here that I hope yeah, I got it done correctly. All right. The first video is manufactured consent. Manufactured consent by Joanne Reed. I want you guys to listen to this. Manufactured consent means it's not real. They manufacture that this is what people want. And the people who do it are the wealthy and they use techniques that are sort of elaborated in, in the Powell memo. When I saw this piece yesterday by Joanne Reed, I, am, I said to myself, Joanne Reed has just joined the team, the, what I call the Ali Velshi team. Ali Velshi has been able to use the platform that would normally not allow them to say certain things in such a manner that They can do it without any severe repercussions. So I tell you what, what I want you to do is listen to Joanne read about manufactured consent, how the black church, black folks are being used in it with Trump to make it seem like if Trump wins, it wouldn't be something that the plutocracy enforced 
but supposedly some change in American attitude. And who best to have this change in American attitude than black folks and other folks who normally cannot, would not vote for Donald Trump. Folks that would actually, uh, folks that make it impossible for Donald Trump to win. So I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. It is, uh, what she did in, in this work here was nothing short of impressive. Manufacturing consent, a concept introduced by Edward S. Herman and Noam Chomsky in their 1988 book on the political economy of the mass media. Here's a clip from the 1992 documentary of the same name. The state loses the bludgeon when you can't control people by force. And when the voice of the people can be heard, you have this problem. Uh, It may make people so curious and so arrogant that they don't have the humility to submit to a civil rule. And therefore, you have to control what people think. It is the job of the media, our job, to not just tell you what happened, but to give you some context around what happened in a way that informs you and helps you make decisions in your busy life. But too often, what the media actually does is create a mass consensus around the preferences of the financial and moneyed elite to subtly make their preferences your preferences. This is especially true in selling wars and sometimes elections. The wealthiest Americans have a clear preference for the outcome. Donald Trump reinstalled as president. Mother Jones recently reported the following in an article about America's top donors heavily favoring Trump and the Republicans, which reflects something we've long known about rich conservatives, their disdain for taxation. Mother Jones reports that Donald Trump may have lost in the Manhattan court where a jury convicted him of all 34 felony charges of falsifying business records. But quote, there's one place he and his party appear to be winning in the race to snag major cash from the richest families in America. For all of Trump's supposed grassroots appeal, as of May 1st, less than one third of contributions to his campaign committee for the 2024 election cycle had come from grassroots donors. That means people giving less than $200. According to Open Secrets, large contributors accounted for 69% of Trump's $121 million total. Whereas President Biden's campaign committee, which took in $195 million, got 54% from large donors. More broadly, the lion's share of confirmed contributions from the biggest political givers, the top 100 families, have flowed to Republican candidates and groups. Then there's something called hard money. This is the money contributed directly to a specific candidate. And these are donations at the federal government caps. In the hard money category, Mother Jones reports that Republicans took in 27% more from the top 100 families than Democrats did. In dollar terms, that's about $86 million for the Republicans versus about $68 million for the Democrats. But if you include soft money, the unlimited donations that the Supreme Court made possible through their Citizens United ruling during and maybe in response to President Obama getting elected by a 10 million vote margin, it's not even close. Quoting Mother Jones again, Republicans raked in a whopping $508 million from the top 100, triple the Democrats' $169 million take. It's a lot of numbers and data, but it may leave you wondering, why would America's wealthiest families continue pouring money into a political party that has stripped itself of its dignity to fashion itself into a religious cult centered around a 78-year-old 37-count felon and adjudicated sexual abuser? Michael Mechanic of Mother Jones, who authored the piece that I'm quoting from, has a pretty good guess. Biden and the Dems have spooked America's richest with their multiple and largely unsuccessful efforts to close abusive loopholes and raise taxes on corporations and the upper crust. That includes efforts to tax the unrealized gains of the mega rich. The paper profits on appreciated investments that are currently only taxed when the assets are sold. In the meantime, Trump and the Republicans are fighting to extend their unpopular and ultimately disappointing 2017 tax cuts, a move the Congressional Budget Office calculates will cost the U.S. government $3.5 trillion with a T over 10 years. So what does that have to do with manufacturing consent? No one seems to know who originated the quote, but it's been repeated by everyone from James Baldwin, who said he was quoting Malcolm X, to Dr. King, that the most segregated hour in American life is 11 a.m. on a Sunday. 
It's just a factual legacy of this nation's history with race and religion that there are predominantly white churches and there are black churches. But what do you think of when you think of a black church? Probably something like this. Now you may even think of images such as these, but what you probably don't think of is this. What a nice welcome. Thank you. That is the reaction to Donald Trump at what nearly every major media outlet reported was his visit to a black church in Detroit, Michigan, one of the 10 blackest cities in America with a population that's about 78% African-American and a poverty rate topping 33%. In other words, it would be hard not to fill a Detroit church with black people. So now I want you to look with your eyes, just look with your eyes again at this crowd. Is what you're seeing here, what you would write in a headline is a black church? And yet, here was the headline in the New York Times, Trump in pitch to black voters in Detroit cast Biden as anti-black. And the Washington Post, Trump portrays rampant crime in speech at black church in Detroit. In the Associated Press, Trump blasts immigrants for taking jobs as he courts voters at a black church MAGA event in Detroit. The Detroit Free Press even ran a photo series online with the headline, Trump visits Detroit church to woo black voters. What they somehow forgot to show was how overwhelmingly white that crowd was and also how many empty seats there were in that sanctuary. In fact, if you looked at the carefully selected images in their online story, you would probably guess the crowd inside that sanctuary was overwhelmingly black and pro-Trump, literally cheering for him and chanting his name. And you would be forgiven for believing that this reinforces what seems to be the new hot narrative, that it is black people, specifically black men, who are driving Trump back into the White House with their overwhelming and historically growing support. And the actual reality that you can see with your own eyes and know if you peel back the layers just a little bit is that Trump spoke to an overwhelmingly white crowd inside a large Detroit church that, yes, does indeed have a black pastor, but which merely served as a venue. And that the people who participated in the roundtable, like those in the audience at that church, were already Trump supporters, not some new historic black supporters of Trump. Trump was in Detroit to participate in something called the People's Convention, a, week, a weekend long gathering arranged by Turning Point Action, a conservative grassroots group founded by activist Charlie Kirk. It would have been easy enough to ask some of the attendees at that roundtable if they came to that church from the convention. And while several of these stories note that Trump harped on crime as part of his presentation, doesn't it seem kind of ironic and pretty relevant that the guy saying that just recently got convicted of 34 felony counts in New York? I mean, Trump raised the crime rate in Detroit just by being there. And one of his new friends at that event, Kwame Kilpatrick, Detroit's former mayor, is just four years out of prison himself, where he was sentenced to 28 years for his role in a wide-ranging racketeering conspiracy that included fraud, extortion, and tax crimes. Kilpatrick extorted city vendors, rigged bids, and took kickbacks and bribes. He used funds from nonprofit civic organizations to line his pockets and those of his family, steering millions of dollars to himself and his friends as Detroit plunged deeper into poverty. Kilpatrick was released because Trump commuted his sentence in 2020. So of course, now he's endorsed him. It's weird, right? How many of the black men endorsing Trump are formerly prominent and famous black men who have criminal records? Not like the criminal records this country has racked up for black men through things like the war on drugs. Nope. For crimes they committed, after they were prominent and or rich, kind of like Donald Trump. Also on hand as part of Trump's Black for Trump, Blacks for Trump coalition, Black Republican Congressman John James, who represents an overwhelmingly white, affluent district in Macomb and Sterling Heights, Michigan, meaning not that district, whose congresswoman is Rashida Tlaib. Also Detroit native and former Trump HUD secretary, Dr. Ben Carson, who hasn't lived in Detroit since he was a child and more recently has lived in mansions in places like Virginia and Florida. The ever-present Trump apologist Byron Donalds, whose majority white district is also in Florida, and a clack of local Detroit rappers who, apologies, I confess, I've never heard of. The church where Trump held this town hall is called 180 Church. Pastor Lorenzo Sewell is a Detroit native who grew up in an abusive home with his father going to prison when he was a teenager. His experience with the criminal justice system did not happen when he was already rich and famous. He became a drug dealer and gang member as a troubled kid, the way it tragically happens for so many Americans in communities with high rates of poverty. But he had a conversion experience his senior year in high school in 1999, according to his church bio, and later became a pastor. Here he is, claiming Biden and Obama never visited the hood. President Trump, I'm so humble that you would be here. President Obama never came to the hood, so to speak, right? 
President Joe Biden, he went to the big NAACP dinner, but he never came to the hood. So thank you. This is the part where I point out that President Obama came to Michigan 15 times as president, including Detroit. Pastor Sewell also claimed it's hard to find a black barber in Detroit for his Blasian kids, which honestly was weird. And in an interview on Fox after the roundtable, he quoted something you've probably never heard of called the Platinum Plan, a black wealth plan he claimed Donald Trump created, but which actually was the idea of rapper Ice Cube. So not a Trump plan at all. And I'll add this. It is ironic that Trump is attempting to court black voters in Detroit just four years after lying about black voters in Detroit and claiming their votes were inherently fraudulent. Michigan was one of the states whose votes Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and their little cabal tried to steal in their insurrection. The attorney general in Michigan has charged 16 people with felonies for trying to steal the votes of black Michiganders from Detroit. So in making his pitch, I wonder if Donald reminded his new friends that he doesn't think their votes in a city where he won only about 5% of the votes should have counted the last time. Which brings me back to the question of manufacturing consent. We know based on the actual data, donations, the endorsements, and open statements of billionaires that it is the super rich and also Christian nationalists who want Trump back in power, not poor folks or black Americans. So why is all this energy being expended to try to pin a potential Trump return on these groups? instead of on his real base. Because Trump has a big lie about black people too. And just like all of his lies, it aims to jeopardize democracy by making you think that he did more for black people than any president but Abraham Lincoln. We will unpack these lies. We Absolutely so, that was great. I mean, when I saw this piece from Joanne, I was like, oh my God, it's a long piece. How do I get it to about 10 minutes or so? in such a manner, cut in and cut in spaces. So that was a long, hard job because it's much longer than this and it goes on further. But anyway, it's important. This piece shows great journalism. And the reason it shows great journalism is because it shows you something that is meant to be unseen, but that you act on. You act on something that's unseen. And what is unseen? Donald Trump making the push towards black men, poor people, etc., criminals. Notice this started way yonder when he pardoned uh, many Democratic politicians that actually did some pretty bad things. Boyanovich from uh, from uh, Chicago, I mean from uh, I think yeah from Illinois when he uh, when he did kill Patrick. All these criminals, notice he hangs along around with a whole lot of criminals. He pardoned them for a reason, okay? He, think that he thinks so little about black folks. He thinks that that gives him cred, as if there is an equation, equation between black and criminality. Now, but that is only the, the uh, understory. The understory is then to get sufficient support, not necessarily majority support, but sufficient support from these folks that make it seem like his elevation to the presidency wasn't caused by the ones who really are the ones pushing his presidency. Look, many billionaires, Democratic and Republican alike, are supporting Donald Trump. We had uh, I, I, one of the, the, uh, the guy from, I, I don't remember the, the, the group, city group or one of these guys, Democrat. It's probably not Citigroup. It's one of the investment banking firms. Went ahead and said, ah, you know, maybe Trump isn't all that bad after all. But what, it, what they were saying is they don't like what a second Biden administration would look like because he will be coming uh, for something like, uh, let me see again. Let me see again. Let, oh, my God. He may actually come for the wealth tax where we really tax wealth. You see, you average American citizens. Your wealth is being taxed every time your house. You don't sell your house and then pay your tax on your house. You pay a wealth tax on your house every single year. But the stockholder, they don't. They only pay a tax on their wealth, which your home is your stock. Their stock, they only pay taxes on that. Oh, again, when they sell it. And by the way, they pay less taxes than you because they pay an appreciation tax. That is taxes less than the going uh, tax base for the average American worker. So manufacturing consent 
is actually, and, and, and our Michael Rudden gets it right, it requires the complicity of the media. That's why it is great to see people like Joanne Reed, Ali Velshi, and others who go around the natural, t- the, the natural uh, direction that our corporate media has, and they find a way to put the message out and still stay on air. And you know there's going to be, after she did that piece, I can guarantee you that many up there, many in the plutocracy, called up MSNBC and said, you better put some tabs on that girl. Again, I am speculating, but I know how these things work. And just like I know, they do that when Ali Velshi puts out certain stories and others put out certain stories. But we got to thank those who use the platform at the time that they have that platform to inform Americans of the fraud that is occurring with the media. So there's that. Uh, let's go ahead and see what else we got here. Paul Fleming says, John Stewart debunks the GOP narrative of crime in major cities and pins the blame on lax red state gun laws. I love that because that is the reality. These blue states, the people can't get guns, so they go over and legally get them in red states then come over and do their crime in blue states. But still, the red states have more crime per capita than the blue states. Amazing. We thought that these guys were the bastions of morality, right? All right, uh, E224 says, Egberto, bus and train still run. Not flying, Boeing is not depriving Gaza of Palestinians of their lives. Boycott Boeing. Uh, well, we'll have, to, we'll have to put that aside for now, E2247. Maybe you and I should have a conversation offline about that. Because, again, I, I get the passion, but we also have to, I want, the activism I want to get done is activism that can get done. Uh, the easiest way that we can have to uh, to have people uh, d- not participate in our activism is to give them a task that is unlikely to succeed. I want to give that, ta- like, the, let me, what, what the protests are doing at the universities, those were successful. Those were successful because it got the attention and it got results. Now, it, Biden actually changed his stance. Those protests were directly responsible for that. Boeing? Uh, well, we'll talk about that another time. All right. Taxation needs to be seen as a patriotic duty. And there is a group called the Patriotic Millionaires. I brought him on, the, the, the chairperson of that, uh, Maurice, Maurice, uh, I brought him on to our show before, um, not Maurice. Uh, anyway, uh, you can look, go search Patriotic Millionaire at politicsonright.com, and you'll find the interviews that I've de- done with him before. Uh, again, uh, you, you'll find it interesting. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Paul Fleming says, Social Security contribution payout breakout. 2023 Americans contributed $1.391 trillion to Social Security. Includes 1.233 trillion from net payroll tax contribution, 51 billion from taxation of benefits, 67 billion in interest. 2023 paid out 1,392 trillion, 102,037 trillion from the old age survivor insurance trust fund, 152 billion from the disability uh, uh, trust fund. Uh, let's see. Do not fly Boeing. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, uh, Eric says, politics done right with Egberto Willis. Don't be mad if others are pissed by the chaos and will vote opposite. I'm not mad at all, because if you think we have chaos now, which we don't, we we have manufactured chaos. That is what was being spoke about. All right. Michael says, the filter rich are looking for a high return on investment, and there's no higher return on investment from corruption of our government in their favor. Exactly. Michael says, Alex Cole, AC News. I, I used to write some of his or post some of his stuff at my site. Uh, has the video of the crowd fan on Twitter. Black voters for Trump rally at a predominantly black church in Detroit, but only white people showed up. Oh man, that that was sort of uh, that was sort of funny. Uh, that was sort of funny. Okay, let's see. I can't put that up because I'm blinking. I'll do it later. 
Uh, Joy and Reed is worth over four million dollars. Like Morning Joe will tell others, uh, I don't. Uh, what's the problem with her worth that amount of money? I don't see a problem. Welcome Maywood from uh, Long Beach, California. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's 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 continue scrolling down. Melissa Bowie is in the house. USA one party system. Uh, not far from it. If you count the neoliberals as uh, soft Republicans, you'd be right. But do remember, we have progressives, but progressives simply caucus with Democrats because we don't have a better place to go in a duopoly. And that's our only possibility. Why does Reed lie so much about Trump? Uh, why are you so gullible? Maybe the question. Uh, let's see. What, no, no, that wasn't an opinion piece. That was journalism. Everything Joy Ann Reed stated there was a statement of fact. What she said about Kirkpatrick, Patrick, what she said about Donald Trump, everything was a documented fact. Give me what part was an opinion, please. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Egberto, you got to enjoy stock market. Uh, next comment. Persuasive Barrier says... Uh, <laughs> Egberto, please post more Ali Velshi. I have so much Ali Velshi is ain't funny. And actually, Ali Velshi gave a good kudos to yours truly. I should play that sometime for you. Persuasive Barry says, have you spoke of Trump's plans for his own Gaza-like conflict on the border? Uh, within, uh, I haven't, but we know it's coming. Egberto, the desperation that comes from poverty hidden cause of crime. Exactly right. Republicans have a pathological hatred for the poor, make policy based on that wealth bias. Thus, red states have more crime. Democrats, to their credit, at least try to help the poor through, though as usual, the effort is insufficient to properly remedy the problems in society. Nail that one to the wall. Nail that to the wall. You're absolutely right. Okay, I have another piece here that I, I need to play. Uh, let's see, uh, what we got here is stop by actually, should I play the stop buying the crap? Yeah. Let's talk about stop buying the crap. This is what I did this. I think it's this morning or the day before on KPFT that I wanted to play here for people here. Check this out. So let's get wised up here with uh, Jack's corner. Okay. Workers. Okay. Good morning, Egberto. How are you? I'm fine. My brother Talk to me. All right. You workers out there, <clears throat> fighting a class war means asserting your worth to your supervisors. If they're making those record profits, they owe you more. If you can join a union, join one. Get yourself some representation. You work, you sweat. It's you that brings home the bacon. Respect yourself for that. Honor yourself. Stand up for yourself. Assert your worth. Man, I tell you, Jack, I just uh, wrote down one thing that you said. If they are making, if they are making work, uh, if they are making record profits, they are not paying you enough. Uh, I, and, I, you know, my subject is about the workers to start with, right? But I never used that sentence before. And that is an important sentence that I think every single American should hear. If they are making record profits, they are not paying you enough because you are the one who does the, the work that allows them that record profits. Now, remember, they're going to come back with the converse. They're going to say, but if we don't make any profits, what does that say about you? And we can always say that, well, what happens already is that when they're not making these profits, they throw you out the door. So mm -hmm. the other end always gets taken care of, but the part of them making record profits instead of reinvesting in you and the jobs, that is the problem. Jack, perfect words, perfect words. Anyway, folks, thank you as usual. I love that sentence. I, I, got, I, got cut off. I, had, a, I had a question for you. We're really yeah, an observation. Ahead. Yes. If these companies are making record profits, aren't they responsible for corporate greed and inflation? You, you, know, you, you can hear this. They're, they're called corporate degree deniers. See, they're, oh, no, there's no such thing as corporate greed. And they're not jacking up the prices because they can. Yes, they are. We so speak anyway. about that all of the times on this show proper. When we say the following, I don't call it inflation. I call it the GCR, the corporate greed, the CGR, the corporate greed rate. And I'd like, you know, I would ask, look, 
any any employer or every executive could come on our program if they want to, to, to try to prove this uh, wrong because they won't because it's impossible. You nailed it. Inflation was not caused by the president. Inflation was caused because corporations found a scapegoat so that when they raise prices, people wouldn't jump and say, it's your fault. But you can't yeah. have two things at the same time. You can't have, you the just nailed it, uh, Howard. Howard, you yes, just sir, nailed it. You go, uh, supply chain issues, ball no. dash. No. No, you you deregulation. nailed it. Deregulation. Right. If you want, if you want to, if you want to point a finger to who is responsible for the inflation wave, try deregulation. They deregulated exactly. everything, and now they get to charge whatever they want to, and they screw you to the wall. Exactly. So Ex- that's exactly. what I. Anyway, folks, uh, and so he nailed it. The GCR. It's not inflation. It is the corporate greed rate. And what we have to do going forward is turn off any program you hear talking about inflation and and doing what what, uh, Howard just talked about. It's the supply chain. It's all these things. All of that is our excuses from corporate greed. Again, there, you would not, um, before I get into the subject and officially open the show, I want to say, say this. You know, whenever you hear on TV, you hear it on 60 Minutes, you hear it on every news program, supply chain problem. They want you to pay for a supply chain problem. But how did the supply chain problem come about for the parts that are true? We didn't have supply chain for mango, or I mean, for limes or lemons or orange or or beef, or all those things. Supply chain problems only occur if it's uh, from overseas. We have enough transportation and everything working in America that for beef and chicken and all these different issues, there should not have been a supply chain problem. But what happens is there are distinct things that come from overseas that did create a supply chain problem. But why did that problem occur? That problem occurred because we, in our infinite wisdom, not we, the executives in their infinite wisdom decided that they were going to fire American workers and go take a lot of our manufacturing and, and all these things overseas. And in the process, and I want you to listen to this well, because this is the job of the executive. They are the ones who do this. And then you pay the price. And so many of you then defend the corporate state. Listen to what they did. They fired American workers. They created manufacture overseas. Now, here's a, an intelligent thing to do would be If you create manufacturing overseas, you better as hell have a large inventory in the United States to cover problems with hurricanes that prevent your products from being uh, come to the United States, Uh, uh, riots and wars uh, that, that delay the product from coming to the United States, pandemics that can create supply chain issues to the United States. But you know what the corporate state did? The opposite. They added, here they go. They ship, they start to bring products from overseas. Then they create something called just in time inventory. That means to save money one time, one big cash payout to these guys. To save that money, what do they do? They create this thing called just in time inventory. What that means then? is that as the ship docks in LA, as the ship docks in in Houston, as the ship docks in Baltimore with the product that was made by in foreign lands after American workers were fired, those ships, as those containers leave those ships, they get to the factory just in time for the American workers who assemble it or for the American workers who put it into the stores for it to be there at that time. So they created just-in-time inventory and they manufacture overseas that are, that's more risky. And that is, they, they, then they went to their boardrooms and said, look how smart we are. We just avoid paying taxes on inventory. We took a one-time uh, profit from emptying out our, our in-time inventory 
so that, hey, we look good on paper. And then they get profits and stock buybacks and all these things for making horrendous decisions that ultimately affects us all. And those are some of the people that many on the right right now and many neoliberals on the middle protect as being these titans of finance. We look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk was was supposed to be this genius who makes electric cars and all of that. But he he didn't really do his job, right? Because what protected, what made Elon Musk's Tesla successful is the credits that the guys who make cars that pollute could keep making cars that pollute by buying credits from who again? Elon Musk to build electric cars. So this guy now has an inventory as large as one that can be seen from space. Why? It wasn't because Elon Musk is a genius. It's because Elon Musk was on the dole. Elon Musk was a welfare recipient. And we, we, we like to call Elon Musk this smart businessman that's a billionaire. There are two classes in this country, folks. Two classes. The work and a very tiny executive class that actually makes all the bad decisions that harm us all. And we have people who are protecting them by trying to stop unions from existing, etc. So today's that was just a preamble to the program because of Jack and Howard bringing in some darn intelligent comments that needed addressing immediately. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us, please join. Absolutely. So, and by the way, Mike Cisak, no, no, you, you, again, you know, what I tell a lot of folks is when you don't think through different levels of indirections, you would make a statement like that. Let me explain. Mar- uh, Cisak says, Egberto, so you are blaming Uh, So you are saying that it was taxes and regulations that forced corporations to decide to move overseas and created a just-in-time system. You say it was corporations to blame, but show it was government that was the reason. No, it was corporations all the way because corporations bought sufficient segments of government to get their will. That's why we on the left support, do not support Citizens United. We want Citizens United overturned. We want a McCutcheon overturned. We want all those different Supreme Court rules or Supreme Court, uh, what do they call them? Uh, Supreme Court rules are uh, to, to make sure that money is not speech and that corporations are not people. What we want to do is take the money, the buying of politicians, out of the system altogether. So again, different levels of indirection. It doesn't start with the government. Government are, or the government is, we the people. That's what government is. But when government is only responded to, we the rich people, we have a problem. We have a problem. All right, let's see. Egberto, best wishes to you for success in net roots. I donated dollars for you last year, but this year I'm unable to repeat. Hope others will donate. Thank you so kindly, E2247. I mean, um, I haven't put out the ask for uh, net roots yet because, again, I need to figure out what certain things are going to cost me before I go ahead and put that out. But I appreciate your sentiment. I appreciate all of you uh, over the years. Uh, be keeping this stuff alive because it's you guys who have kept this thing alive 100%. Cien por ciento. Ustedes lo han hecho. All right. Michael Rade says, those on the left want big money corruption out of politics and support federally funded elections. If you want to fix government corruption, 
vote anti-corruption, vote in anti-corruption candidates. I got one more video to play. Greed is not good. And then we'll be able to close our baby out. Wait, do you have any words of wisdom? Democrats, we need to stand up to the Republicans on a more equitable tax code. Tax the wealthy tax dodgers. Nowadays, the American taxpayer is paying for corporate welfare as they all make record profits. That's crazy. Maybe it's uncool to be so greedy. Yeah, it's uncool to be so greedy. See, Jack, it's interesting, right? Uh, uh, Our economic system, they say, is based on greed. Remember that great movie called Wall Street, where uh, uh, the big capitalist stock trader, stock broker, whatever he was, uh, Gordon Gecko said uh, to some, he said greed. He said greed is what makes everything uh, go around. I forgot the exact phrase that he used, but greed, a, for lack of a better word, is good. Exactly. Exactly. Greed is good. And the fact of the matter is greed is not good. But you know what's even better, Jack? Most Americans don't display uh, that unending necessity to be greedy. Uh, their greed generally ends to where they feel they have enough. In other words, you know, greed is that necessary thing to make sure you can get your family fed, to make sure you can get the things that you really need to survive, survive. But the, there's this, there's this inordinate greed that we have in the select few that it's never ever, ever enough. And the truth of the matter is, if most Americans were greedy, what you would see, Jack, is you would not see those uh, those people at the bus stops every day trying to get to work, at the train stops trying to get their work, trying to get to work, uh, given all the charitable organizations that we have, given not for a tax break, just for the sake of giving. There are many folks who keep KPFT on air and they're not doing it for the tax break. There are so many who are not even in, in the, in the part of the tax code that affects, that affects their uh, itemization of their donations. And they still give most Americans are good people. Most Americans are not greedy people. Most Americans just want to survive. And for those who like or or sit back and think that most people are just looking for a handout. Yeah, there's a lot of folks looking for a handout. And the the biggest culprits are not the poor people getting food stamps or not. I think it's it's not called food stamps anymore. I don't think it's called uh, whatever (laughs) new name. But I mean, uh, for people, those are the people. Many people think these are the greedy ones. Are there are some people that abuse some of the giveaways? Uh, I shouldn't even say giveaways for the what what many of us called uh, entitlements. Are those the greedy ones? No, 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 no. If you take a look at our budget, if you take a look at the subsidies we give, the amount of billions of dollars, and that goes straight into uh, corporate coffers that are not used to improve their sales, improve working. Uh, the working conditions, in, is, they're not used for that. They're used just to enrich the few. Uh, from, COVID, from the COVID stimuli that many got with the PPP that never got paid back to, the little, to, to, to those who just get the subsidies to pull oil out of the ground, something that they didn't put there, but they profit by as they overcharge us for, um, for the People who look at what happened recently with Chiquita Banana, uh, who in order to maintain profits condone murder. I mean, the, the people going wrong is not the average American citizen. The callers to this program, whether left or right, all have goodness in their hearts. I mean, sometimes it's reflected that way. Sometimes the goodness is manifested as fear and wanton maintenance. But folks, let's not allow them, and when I say them, I mean the minute few, that few group of the wealthy that has decided they, dis- they, they want a, a policy that further enrich them over the democracy of the country. Don't let them be the ones who 
make these changes. So thank you. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form. Absolutely. So don't let them do that. Anyway, uh, thank you, Yvette. EBT, Electronic Benefits Transfer, I think is what it's called. Thank you for that, uh, Yvette. Uh, Mike Cisak, uh well, that's another conversation. But Paul Fleming has a message. He says, uh, Trump is not staying in Milwaukee for the RNC. He's going to stay in Chicago instead. Why? Because Trump has a hotel in Chicago. So when the Secret Service and his political entourage all need hotel rooms, Trump gets the money. The entire thing is a grift, for which E2247 says, grift, grift, grift. Absolutely so. And Michael Rodden said, maybe we should raise corporate taxes on those uh, corporations who pay their employees so little that they go on government assistance. Drexel University 2021, McDonald and Walmart ranked in the top for employers in all included states for a number of full-time workers utilizing federal net program, safety net programs. They employ thousands of staff who, despite uh, working full-time hours, still made so little that they met income and eligibility requirements. Yep, what they should do is they should just, wh- whatever they pay out in, in necessary in needs of these people, just build a company, right? Build a company. Build a company. I mean, the corporation. We have to understand how evil these these institutions are, uh, and and what's worse about it is how many people that don't have a pot to you know what in support these guys and and will kill themselves, will harm themselves. Look at Eric. Eric will go above above and beyond to 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 really help the wealthy when all they're doing is screwing us all, including him. Just doesn't get it. But anyhow. Uh, Folks, please remember, you can support our program by going to Politics and Support our program by going to politicsandright.com slash support. I just put it in the chat, politicsandright.com slash support. You can support us on Patreon by going to politicsandright.com slash Patreon. Patreon is another way of supporting our program. But what I want to ask everybody is become a subscriber to our newsletter. It's inexpensive. It's saying, you know, we see the value in you, uh, the value in what you do. Uh, uh, Let's see. Go ahead and say, go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter, and uh, become a paid subscriber. Paid subscribers get to read all our books free of charge. Become a paid subscriber and you can read the books and you get, again, it's, it's a coffee a month. I think, I think it's, it's a good deal. And also, you can go get our books. All of these are ways to support us. You can get our, book by going to, our books by going to politicsandright.com slash books, politicsandright.com slash books. But I, I ask you kindly, uh, one way to keep us uh, on an even keel, we have, I think we're, we, we've, we got to 110 uh, paid supporters on uh, on on our newsletter. Our newsletter has several thousand subscribers, but only 110 paid subscribers. We'd like to move that from about one percent to about 10 percent. So 10 uh, percent actually for this year. We'd like to get it to 20 percent next year. Will you help us get there? I know you can. Again, it's a coffee a month. A coffee a month. That's all. A coffee a month. And you will be doing magic with that to help me continue doing this. I need a lot of help. 16 hours a day, seven days a week is taxing. When I go off to Baltimore, it's going to be interesting because I do interviews right through the day. And then I start slicing and cutting at night. I'm probably going to get one day when I go ahead and be able to mingle a little bit with a lot of the folks there. But most of the time, it's going to be just. Doing that twenty four seven, which I had, wish I had help. So uh, if we can get to you know uh, fifteen two thousand uh, or so uh, subscription, we'll be on our way. So please consider being subscribers of our uh, newsletter and encourage others to support our newsletter. Again, it's a coffee a month. Politicsandright dot com slash newsletter. Politicsandright dot com slash newsletter. All right, uh, uh, Melissa is willing to help. I w- would love that. Maybe you can you can help me do some stuff uh, uh, on these other uh, other platforms as well. Since I know you want to get into, or you're probably already into multimedia, etc., 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 etc. That'd be great. Uh, 
let's see what else have we got here. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, by the way, Bridge right now does some work for us on YouTube by making sure we don't get those crazies on YouTube. Uh, it would be great for you to join the fold as well as a PDR Posse person. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to do this one with GoFundMe. I think I'm going to do PayPal, um, Eric, and then send the notice out for the trip to Baltimore. Uh, Lizard Queen is in the house. I would help too. All right, great, great, great. Maybe we we should have a that that is great. I want to uh, uh, let me see how we can uh, arrange for 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 tasks if if you are willing to do it for me on how many days a week. I mean, it, here's my biggest problem with asking for um, help is I want I want people to be paid. For good work, I know there's volunteering, but if I ask somebody to do something, let's say post things to the when we are going live to post things every day or every other day, or if we get a team that somebody is Monday, another is Tuesday, when all those things have to work on, I am not good at building that posse. Maybe I need to work harder on doing that. Maybe a Zoom meeting. Ah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Let me work on that. Let me work on some tasks. And then we can do that Lizard Queen and um, as well as Melissa Bowie, et cetera, if, if for everyone that's willing. I tell you what, if, any, uh, uh, if anybody is willing to kind of help with um, uh, multimedia, et cetera, give me a shout. Just drop me a line and then we'll take it from there. But look, I love you all. Thank you all for all the support that I've always gotten from you. Uh, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.